All right. Uh, good morning, folks. I hope everyone had a, a good day yesterday. Uh, it's good to see everyone uh, live yesterday. So um, hopefully you were able to kind of get used to uh, kind of get a feel for what the quiz is going to be like tomorrow. Uh, so tomorrow, remember what we'll do is we'll meet at uh, during our class period. Uh, we'll try to get there on time. Uh, we'll meet at Zoom, same class code, same um, uh, password. And so make sure you, you get there on time. Uh, we'll meet. Uh, I'll just give you a couple of, uh, if there's any updates, I'll give you uh, the updates. And then <clears throat> we'll start the quiz. At the end of the quiz, then uh, you're free to leave the Zoom meeting. But uh, make sure then that you... Um, uh, get the work done on your paper. Okay, so remember there's two, there'll be a couple multiple choice questions that you just uh, click on and then there's one free response, one calculation that you'll have to do on your own paper. You'll uh, type in your answer on Edmodo, but then you'll write your answer, you'll write your answer and you'll show your work on a separate piece of paper and then you'll uh, upload that onto Google Classroom and make sure you get all that done on time. Okay. Uh, afterwards, then what I'll do is I'll dismiss you, and then um, <clears throat> you'll just go ahead and you'll watch the video. Um, I'll try to make it a, a bit shorter, but um, you'll watch the video and then uh, um, submit the work there as well. And so, hopefully, my hope is that we'll be done with chapter eight um, by the end of the period tomorrow. Remember, over spring break, over the break, I will continue to post videos daily going over the material with you. Um, I won't require that you turn in any work, uh, but please try to watch the video, uh, get the homework done. Um, I also won't assign the homework, but I will point out to you the homework uh, that would be um, um, equivalent to what we, were, we will be discussing in that particular video. And then that way you can uh, get the work done, get some practice uh, with the chapter nine material. So I'm gonna go through chapter nine. My hope is that we can finish chapter nine over the spring break, and then when we get back, We'll start into um, the uh, thermal, uh, we'll, we'll start into the new, uh, new unit, okay? All right, so um, with that said then, uh, let's try to finish up with chapter eight today. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use the um, FET lab that, uh, that I assigned you last week to go over VESPER theory with you. And so if you don't have it, uh, go ahead and uh, pause the video, go get your FET lab, because I'm gonna be using that to help us uh, through this, uh, this, the concept of VESPER. Okay? Now, VESPER, folks, to answer, just, to answer valence shell electron pair repulsion, it's a theory in localized electron, in the localized electron model. It's a theory that helps us to explain then the shapes of molecules. And molecular shape, folks, is absolutely important when it comes to the properties of these compounds that we're going to talk about. And uh, hopefully you remember from first year chemistry that the shape of a molecule will determine properties such as boiling point, melting point, um, the uh, three to, uh, the solid structure and so forth for um, almost every property of the um, of the compound on a macroscopic level can be traced to the shape of the molecule itself. Okay, and so Vesper then is the localized electron model's way of trying to explain the shapes of these molecules. Okay, so molecular shape uh, basically boils down to this that the electrons repel each other. The electrons, whether it's electrons in the bonds or the electrons that are lone pair uh, electrons, electrons are all negatively charged, so they repel one another. And as such then, when we consider the shapes of a molecule, we have to be able to consider the shape, uh, the location of the electrons as well. So when we talk about molecular shape, we're, we're discussing then the locations of the atoms relative to one another. That's what accounts for molecular geometry. But those atoms, the position of those atoms, it's determined by the electrons, the electrons that those atoms have, the electrons that they share with other atoms. So the, because the electrons repel each other, the electrons are what determines the molecular shape. And so we need to also talk about the electron geometry, that is the, uh, the location of the electrons around an atom. So we need to talk about that before we start talking about the molecular geometry, which is the relative position of the atoms uh, to each other to determine the shape of the molecule. Okay? And so that was the idea behind the, um, uh, the uh, FET lab there. And so the FET lab talked about uh, the molecular shape, but um, I'm going to use this also to talk about the um, electron geometry. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and let's take a look. So the, um, 
I'm sorry. So with that said, then we're gonna. There's two types of electrons that we have to uh, differentiate. Uh, there's two types of electrons that we'll have to uh, describe and we'll have to define in order to determine then the shapes of these molecules here. And so we have to define then what are called lone pair electrons and what are uh, bonding electrons. Okay. So the lone pair electrons, those are non-bonding electrons. Okay. Those are the electrons, and we did this with the formal charges. These are the electrons that are uh, uh, that belong solely to a single atom. It doesn't share those electrons. The bonding electrons then are the ones that are shared between two atoms. And with the bonding electrons then, we saw that there are three types of uh, ways that the electrons can be shared. It can be shared in a single bond, a double bond, and a triple bond. And depending on what they are, a different number of electrons are being shared. So with single bonds then, you have a two electrons that are being shared, one pair. In a double bond, you have two pairs that are being shared, which is four electrons. And then with a triple bond, then you have three pairs that are being shared, which then indicates six electrons. And so with that said, then you have to understand that's the difference there. And the difference in repulsion then, um, uh, we will see when we get to real molecules here. Okay, so when we talk about the models uh, that we're, we're gonna do in just a moment, um, the, the repulsion between the bonding electrons and the non-bonding electrons are about the same. Okay? However, we're gonna see when we get to real molecules, and hopefully you've already seen that by doing the Fed Lab, that with real molecules, the, the lone pair electrons, the non-bonding electrons repel a little bit more than the bonding electron pairs themselves. Okay? And so make sure you keep that in mind. However, when we, when we start discussing geometries, electron geometry or molecular geometry, we're gonna be discussing what are called electron domains. Electron domains, and make sure you keep this in mind when we talk about this, and let me go ahead and, um, and, and uh, write this out for you. Okay, so when, elect when we refer to electron domains, okay, electron domains are just regions of electrons around an atom. These are regions of electrons. We'll define it as regions of electrons around an atom. Okay. So these electron domains are simply the bonding and non-bonding electrons. So bonding and non-bonding electrons. Again, bond, uh, non-bonding electrons are those lone pairs. And so when we talk about these electron domains, when we talk about these electron domains, we are discussing then the electrons that surround a particular atom. And so with these electron domains, then um, we have to uh, we ha we will count these domains then, um, and these domains then will determine the geometry. These will determine the electron geometry of an atom. So we got to count the electron domains of an atom. Okay. Now with electron domains, let me go ahead and do this here. Okay. With electron domains, so let me go ahead and uh, clear this really quickly. Okay. So with electron domains, and I'm just going to finish out here and then we'll start. Okay. With electron domains, in regard to the bonding electrons okay so the bonding electrons okay are um, um are considered electron domains okay and bonding uh, bonding electrons then regardless of type are considered one electron domain one electron domain, meaning then, okay, a single bond, a double bond, or a triple bond is considered a single electron domain. Okay, so what this means for us then is that if we don't treat a double bond as if it's two domains, a triple bond as it's three. A single bond, a double bond, or a triple bond will be considered a single electron domain around an atom. 
So understand this, what we define an electron domain as is a region of elect regions of electron around a, an, an atom. And with that said then, a single bond is a region of electrons, even though it's, it's, it only counts as one pair, double bond is two pairs and a triple bond is three, we don't consider then them different in terms of their contribution to the geometry of the electrons around an atom. And that'll become much more apparent as we go through the, um, the FET lab here, okay? All right, so let's go ahead then and let's start the FET lab, okay? Uh, so let me go ahead and do this, okay? And they asked you to start out with the, um, with the, um, uh, with the molecule, the models here, okay? And so hopefully you did this, folks. And um, if you didn't, I would suggest you go back and do this. Make sure you click on in the box in the bottom here. Click on molecular molecule geometry and electron geometry. I'm going to remove all the atoms right now. And so we're going to be building off of this uh, center atom here. Okay. Uh, just understand this. When we describe the molecular geometry of a molecule, when we describe the geometry of a molecule, we are describing the geometry around the center atom. And so that's why when you draw the Lewis dot structures, and we'll talk about this hopefully a little bit more tomorrow, when we talk about the Lewis, uh, when we talk about electron ge um, describing the molecular geometry of, an, uh, of a molecule, we have to first get the Lewis dot structure. And then once we have the Lewis dot structure, then we can go ahead and count electron domains around the molecule. And then from those electron domains, we identify then the geometry, the electron geometry of the, around that center atom. And then from that, then we can derive and obtain the molecular geometry. And so the geometries then will be described in textbooks and in your homework, in your book, and um, uh, in any reference source. The molecular geometry is, is usually um, referring to the center atom. However, with that said, we can describe the electron geometry. We can describe the geometry around any atom. And I'm going to ask you, to, as long as we know how many electron domains there are, we can describe the geometry around any atom, okay? All right, so with that said, then hopefully you're familiar with, uh, you're able to see this already, you, you, you familiarize yourself with this. Um, and so what I'd like to do is I'm gonna go through a few of these models here that uh, uh, you were asked to make, okay? And so, uh, and then we'll talk about each one of those in turn. Okay, so let's go ahead then, and um, let's, let's uh, do the first molecule, and I'm gonna uh, work this out for you. The first molecule that they asked you to do the first molecule on the first page they asked us to make was then the molecule that was A and C2. Okay. A then represents just that center purple atom. That this is what they reference as A. And the C is a double bonded, a double bonded atom. Okay, so basically what if we were to draw the Lewis dot structure for this one, then it would be A, double bonded C, double bonded C. So we're going to double bond, two double bonds, and then we're going to look at the molecular and electron geometry with this. Okay, so before we start that though, okay, let's go ahead and consider this here. Okay. If this is the molecule here that we're making, okay, how many electron domains, and again, we're, uh, right, we're, we're doing now is we're analyzing the uh, electron domains around the center atom here, okay, and we're going to describe from this uh, FET lab, we're describing the electron and molecular geometry around this center atom here. Okay. All right, so with that said, that A has no lone pairs. So uh, zero lone pairs for this atom, but it has two double bonds, okay? So it has two bonds. Again, we don't count them separately. We just consider this as a region of electron around uh, uh, A, and this is another one. So that's two bonds, okay, uh, two bonds. And so therefore, okay, the total number of electron domains then is then two electron domains. Okay. We have two bonds, no lone pairs, two electron domains around the center atom. Okay. All right. So with that said, then, uh, make sure you write that down. Um, uh, hopefully uh, include this. Please make sure you include this into your work as well to help you with this. Okay. All right. So they wanted us to describe the molecular geometry okay, around this center atom. And I'm going to ask us to also describe the electron geometry. And so in your work, make sure you write this down. So we want both of these here. Okay. So let's go ahead then. Hopefully you made the prediction. Okay. And um, let's go ahead and add in the two. Okay. One, two. 
Okay, so we have then our two molecules here, uh, two atoms there. I'm gonna stretch this around just a little bit here. All right, and so if you notice then, uh, you take a look at what we have down here. So we have then the molecular geometry is linear. Why is it linear? If you take a look at this, the angle here is 180. That's, that's the angle, if the angle here between the two bonds now, remember the angle, uh, the angle here that's given to you is the angle between the bonds. And when we talk about bond angle, okay, this is going to be the bond angle. Okay, the angle between the bonds, not the angle between the lone pair. So when we talk about angle, it's always referring to the bond angle. Okay. All right, so the bond angle is 180 degrees, which means then these, all three atoms then fall along a line. Okay, so they fall along a line, so we refer to this geometry then as linear, because the atoms are all along a line. Now that's the molecular geometry. Remember, the molecular geometry describes the position of the atoms relative to one another. Okay, so uh, this is, this refers to the position of the atoms. This refers to the position of the, the electrons. And so you want to make sure you keep that in mind. Okay. All right. So with that said, then, if you notice, the electrons here also, the, uh, the two bonds also fall uh, on, along a line with one another. So the atoms fall along a line, but the electrons here, the four electrons here and the four electrons here, they also fall within a line. And so the electron geometry is also linear. Okay. And so that's what we have here. That's what we have. And so the electron and in this case, the molecular geometry, both are exactly the same. But make sure you keep this in mind then that the molecular geometry describes the position of the atoms relative to each other and the electron geometry describes the position of the electron relative to one another. Okay. All right, so with that said then, hopefully, please make sure you write that down. Um, uh, the last question they ask us is, does the center atom have its octet? And yes, if you, have, if you count the uh, electrons, you have two, four, six, eight. The octet for uh, center atom is complete, okay? All right, so let's go ahead then and let's um, continue on. Okay? And what I wanna do here is hopefully you have this. Let's go ahead then, let's take a look at the next molecule. Okay, let's take a look at the next molecule. I'm gonna remove all this here. Okay, so the next one they want us to, to draw then, uh, they want us to do, okay, is the, um, I'm sorry, so with that said then, hopefully you saw then, whenever you have two electron domains, the geometry for the um, two electron domains, the geometry for the molecule, and the geometry for the electron will be exactly the same. Now that geometry is going to be linear, so make sure you know, make note of that as we move forward. Okay? <clears throat> Let's go ahead and take a look at the, uh, the next one. Okay? We have a molecule they want us to make that is A, purple atom, plus B. B, we were told then, is a single bonded atom. <clears throat> and then we have three of these E's. And E's then are the uh, lone pair electrons. Okay, so these are lone pair electrons. Okay, so let's go ahead then and let's imagine what we had here. We have A, center atom, okay, single bonded to B, which is uh, the, sing uh, the single bonded atom. The lone pairs here have to sit on the on the center atom here. So we have then three lone pairs around that atom. Okay. So let's go ahead and describe again. The molecular and electron geometry will be based upon the electron domains around this center atom here. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead then and let's describe then lone pairs. We have three lone pair electrons. Okay, so three regions of electrons that are considered lone pairs, and we have one bond. One bond, and so therefore, when we add this up, we have four electron domains. Four electron domains around A. Now remember, what we're doing with, for right now, we're describing both the molecular geometry and electron, and electron geometry only around A. We can describe, we can, and we will later, uh, hopefully tomorrow, describe the electron geometry around this atom as well. But for right now, for this activity, we're only looking at atom A. Okay. All right. So with that said, then let's go ahead and let, let's go ahead and we want to describe the molecular geometry and the electron geometry. And let's see. In remember, in the previous example, we saw them exactly the same. Let's see what happens now. So we have four electron domains around the center atom. Let's go ahead and add our single bonded. Okay. Let's go ahead and add in. 
uh, our single bond, there it is. So we have the single bond between A and B, just so we have that, and we want three lone pairs. Okay, let's go ahead and let's take a look at this molecule. I'm gonna switch this around really fast, okay, just so you can see this. Okay, so we see that, okay. So in terms of the molecular geometry, you see then that it's linear, okay. And I'm gonna try to finish up with this, okay. We see that the electron, the molecular geometry here is linear, okay. And again, why is it linear? Because remember, the molecular geometry takes into account the position of the atoms relative to one another. These two atoms, and there are only two, they fall along a line with one another, okay? And so therefore then, along this line, then if it's a line, it's 180 degrees, basically. So therefore, the molecular geometry is linear. We have it right there. But if you take a look at the electron geometry, the electron geometry is what we refer to as a tetrahedral shape. Okay? Um, we'll talk about this tetrahedral shape a little bit more tomorrow, but the tetrahedron, if you can imagine it, um, it is going to be a, um, a four corners. So four corners, if you think about it, kind of like a pyramid. Uh, think about when you take four balloons and you wrap them together, they will assume this shape of a tetrahedron. Okay? And so remember what we're doing here. I'm sorry, let me go to this here. Let me show you real quickly. Okay. What we're doing here, and I'm just going to turn this molecule around for you really quickly. Okay. If you notice there, if you take a look at this molecule right there, okay. Um, you can see then as we turn this around, there is kind of a pyramid shape here with these three at a corner in the bottom and a, the, this electron, uh, this um, uh, atom here at the top. This is what we refer to as the tetrahedron. And I'll, and I'll like I said, we'll talk much more about this shape tomorrow. Okay? But obviously what you'll see then that with the electron domain, with the electron geometry, we're taking into account all of the electron domains. There's four of them here and they do not fall within a line. They fall within uh, the shape here, what we call tetrahedron, and the angles between the electron domains. So make sure you keep this in mind. We're counting electron domains for electron geometry. So this is one electron domain here. This is the second electron domain. This is the third electron domain, and this is the fourth one. Three lone pairs and a bond here. And so these electron domains, take, uh, uh, take, um, uh, when they repel one another, the angle here, and we'll, we'll talk about this, is going to, and let's take a look at the angles real quickly. Um, so this 180. Uh, with the bonds in, it, uh, but if the, the angle between the electron domains is going to be roughly about 109 degrees, not 180. And that's the angle that uh, we see then between different parts of a tetrahedron. Okay? And so with that said, then I, I've run out of time. Uh, please make sure you write this down. Okay, so make sure you include the electron geometry and the number of electron domains on your, on your FET lab as well. That will definitely help you understand the, uh, the geometry much more. And uh, when we get to the discussion of hybridization in the next chapter, this will absolutely help you with that discussion. And so please make sure you write down this extra information. All the, the FET lab only requires that you write down the molecular geometry. Please include in the electron geometry and electron domains as well. Uh, what I would, uh, I won't assign any extra work for you today, um, but do take a look at the rest of the FET lab and include this, this extra information here. So include the electron, uh, electron geometry and the number of electron domains in your FET lab as well to help you uh, finish up, to help us finish up with this uh, uh, discussion tomorrow. And so um, please make sure then you get that FET lab done. I'll, I'll post it and then you'll, you'll turn it in to me by tomorrow afternoon. I'm sorry, tomorrow evening, and we'll complete the, that. We'll, uh, we'll that'll finish up the fit lab for you. Okay. All right, so folks. Um, um, so tomorrow, I'll see you tomorrow uh, for the quiz, and then we'll continue this discussion online after after the quiz. Okay. All right. Have a good day, folks, and I will see you tomorrow.